Welcome to Your UA Light Celestial Insight. Hello, everyone. August is a really interesting month. The cosmos continue to urge everyone to do deep dives of discovery and big audits to realign all areas of your inner and outer lives as we approach the next set of eclipses in October. But with a particular focus this month on big audits for revising your personal philosophies, your understanding of your multidimensional identity, in your relationship to the world as you experience powerful revelations this month, okay? This is emphasized by us beginning and ending the month with full moons on August 1st and August 30th. So that's right, we have two full moons in Aquarius and Pisces that book end the month. Additionally, while we already have Venus, Saturn, Neptune, Pluto, Chiron, and Eris all stationed retrograde. Mercury and Uranus will also join them in station retrograde at the end of this month, making a total of eight planets retrograde this month of August. Okay, so that definitely makes it a great time to review your Venus and Leo and your Saturn and Pisces and Pluto and Aquarius, astrology and tarot readings linked below, since these particular planets are all retrograde. See how things may be coming to pass for you and leave some comments under the videos and the pod so that I know what's going on with you. So with an abundance of full moon activity and eight planets stationing retrograde, ultimately August and also September, um, it's a month about the big audit, okay, reviewing, revising, remembering, and reflecting, and doing research for enlightenment, clarity, and resolution related to all areas of your lives, but particularly in terms of revising your understanding of your personal philosophies, that dimensional identity in relationship to the world, like I mentioned, but due to how the polarities of Leo and Aquarius, Pisces and Virgo, and Aries and Libra express themselves, the celestial bodies and points are concentrated in a way that highlight these polarities. But these polarities all share a central concern, actually, so it's pretty simple. All of these polarities concern the tensions of the self versus the other, the self versus groups and the collective, and consequently, the self in relation to the world, okay? And when thinking about the self versus the other, this is the domain of identity and how you understand and even love yourself, okay? Self versus self versus groups and the collective. This is about your personal versus the collective consciousness and values and philosophies, okay? And in terms of the self in relationship to the world, it's about how you relate to the world based on all of these things and also how you manage impulses and assert yourself and live out your beliefs. And I'm recording this early July, but I anticipate you will see this all around you and in your personal life as the new moon in Aquarius begins to come full circle. And it may be a triggering time where it's important to see things with your higher mind. Okay, so take a minute to like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and if you're listening to the podcast, tap the stars to leave us a positive review. And let's get into the astrology overview of the monthly astrology and the lunar astrology of these full moons in Aquarius and Pisces and the new moon in Leo and ultimately some spiritual and practical guidance to help you successfully navigate the month. 
In terms of our monthly astrology, the last week of July includes some celestial activity that will color the month of August. So let's start there, okay? We begin August uh, with the sun in Leo, but we'll be just coming off of a Mercury and Venus retrograde conjunction in Leo right before it enters into Virgo. Okay, and with Venus and Mars both becoming invisible. And so along with the full moon on August 1st, which always marks a time of reflection and completions and illuminations through events and information, this Venus retrograde and Mercury conjunction and Venus and Mars being invisible They also suggest that important communications will be happening related to your current projects, maybe future opportunities related to money and relationship matters that need your attention and that you must review and take action on. It suggests that maybe many things like projects, conflicts, or certain trips will also be coming to a head or to pleasant completion or even beginning, right, around this time uh, as the full moon is coming to full illumination close to August 1st, okay? And so having Mars invisible in Virgo and Venus retrograde invisible in Leo and a full moon all happening at the same time it will also sort of mark this desire to turn inward, you know, where you're sort of beginning this audit, right? Directing your focus on contemplating, you know, contemplating ideas, your personal beliefs, physical health practices, and what you do and don't desire for your life, uh, and also your relationship and group associations. It will mark a period of finding your power in quiet confidence and influence, and working on revising and clarifying projects behind the scenes. And there's more to Venus and Mars being invisible that's important. Again, it will have the impact of turning careful attention to how you invest your time, money, and energy. Also, turning attention to money, health, relationship matters, and any issues with aggression and competition and conflict. I have to say that these two being invisible may increase passive aggressiveness and even a sort of final outburst of people's long-standing and previously withheld aggressions and beliefs coming to the surface, right? That test how you may need to show restraint on one hand, but also assertiveness and demanding proper respect in other instances. Okay, and this is in addition to the full moon and Aquarius astrology aspects, right? And really illuminates and introduces this overall main theme. Okay, so I'll first go into the astrology of the full moon in the first few days of August. So in addition to the abundance of retrograde planets, you know, encouraging an audit, the Aquarius full moon astrology also highlights, you know, the importance of having clear vision and intentions for all that you do. An Aquarius full moon features the Leo sun and the Aquarius moon in opposition to each other while in these fixed signs, you know, related to uh, your beliefs, right? And also your passionate feelings and creative gifts and impulses, right? And so um, on the one hand, this Aquarius full moon astrology really spotlights how important imagination, clarity, and certainty in your creative visions best guide, should best guide the actions that you take to achieve goals and realize dreams. But it also emphasizes the importance of a really clear self-concept as the basis from which you act and dream as well, right? And it shines a spotlight on all that can really erupt when you don't know yourself or love yourself while trying to be in relation to anybody else 
or while trying to attain certain goals, okay? And in this Aquarius full moon astrology, Jupiter squares the sun and moon. And so it is also about managing ego, ambition, promises, and expectations in your endeavors, but also in the experiences that you may be having this month as you engage new worlds. It's about managing care and attention to your individual needs, priorities, wants, and desires, with also some consideration for the greater good. And this may prove to be uncomfortable and the point of tension this month, okay? Because this is an opposition between two fixed signs, while Mercury in Virgo is in opposition to Saturn in Pisces, this is going to be a time when your own and others' fixed beliefs, boundaries, identity and beauty politics, critiques and judgments are being illuminated, expressed, and challenged. Speaking of which, the specific fixed stars at play here in the astrology also illuminate how ego battles and critiques of or even between celebrities and public figures may be in the mix. Jupiter is here just really contributing to the mass spread of oppositional ideas that challenge others to expand their beliefs and understanding of others' points of view and experiences, right? Especially consideration of ideas related to children, women, health, and workplace inequalities with this trying to Mars in Virgo, all right? But this aspect is also great for seizing professional opportunities and for productivity, refining your arguments in organization, administration, and even writing, okay, and securing opportunity for long-term success or future ambitions. With Jupiter here, it's also going to be a time when many may be traveling to new places, learning, right, and these experiences having an impact on your personal beliefs, philosophy, and relationship to the world. And this astrology could also be about, you know, having reality checks of things that you idealized and uh, experiences where you're having to adapt to the rules, restrictions, regulations, and customs of an environment, right? And when you may be also expressing your preferences and boundaries to new strangers, okay, in your circumstances, and these energies will be prominent through the whole month, okay? And so if you look at the outline here of dates and planet positions, particularly if you are tuning in on YouTube, which I definitely encourage, you will see, you know, that we have this full moon on the 1st. We have all of these planets that are retrograde. We also have Mercury exalted in Virgo all month, okay, where Mercury retrograde begins on the 23rd, on the same day that the sun moves into Virgo, right? So Mercury retrograde and Virgo season begin on the same day, August 23rd. And so even though Mercury retrograde doesn't begin until the 23rd, it still means that we are in the shadow period essentially throughout the entire month, right? So, um, and then shortly after that, Mars moves from Virgo into Libra, and then on the 28th, that is when Uranus stations retrograde, and then we end the month with that full moon in Pisces on the 30th, okay? And so this is not exhaustive of all the planetary key players or inclusive of aspects, but as you can see just from these, there is a concentration of celestial bodies and points, you know, centering these polarities of Leo and Aquarius, Pisces and Virgo, and Aries and Libra, okay? So, for example, in terms of the Leo and Aquarius polarity, okay, in August we have the Sun and Venus retrograde and Lilith all in Leo, 
all in opposition to where we're going to have the moon. We also have Pluto on this cusp of Capricorn and Aquarius, right? And then um, in terms of the astrology this month, we're going to have this sun also move into Virgo. And we're also going to have Mercury and Mars in Virgo. And they're going to be essentially stationed um, in Virgo in opposition to planets Saturn, Neptune, and, you know, what will be our full moon at the end of the month in Pisces. And then what's also happening here is we also have Chiron and Aries retrograde and in conjunction with the North Node that has just moved into Aries, okay? Um, and those things in opposition to the South Node now in Libra, and then Mars is going to move into Libra at the end of the month. And so regardless of whether or not these uh, planets and points form exact oppositions to each other, they are all still activating the and expressing themselves through the filter of the energies of these signs, right, really powerfully, um, that are in opposition to each other, making the sort of main energies and concerns and scenarios and things that are happening um, really sort of concentrated in relationship to the ways that these polarities express themselves, okay? And these sort of main energies concern things like examining, revising, and even further confirming your deeply held beliefs about yourself and others, and your work through experiences that really open you up to difference, to diversity, and new discoveries. It's about that balance of being open, but discerning and discriminating in your encounters with the people in the world around you as your experiences and your increasing self-awareness help to clarify your individual beliefs and help to grow your confidence in your own point of view. It's about experiences that offer growth growth opportunities related to knowing and loving the self, knowing your boundaries and setting healthy boundaries and establishing healthy relational dynamics with others, right? Whether that is you stating your stance on something or experiencing internal resolve and just keeping your ideas to yourself, you know, or you giving someone the cold shoulder or limiting your engagement with them as a way of setting a boundary, right? Um, the spiritual advice from the stars really is to be the change that you want to see and to direct things towards the way you want them to be, all right? It's about embodying your ideals and doing what you need. And also, I'm going to say try your best to move away from chaos and People in any situations that may want to pull you into their drama versus pulling you into their peace, okay? There's this theme of borders, boundaries, shattered ideals and illusions, and also loyalties that really animate the tensions of how much attention you devote to the self versus others, right? Building your own dreams versus contributing to a community or collective. And how, how you relate to the larger world while you tend to your personal and internal world, all the while you're being divinely and even rudely awakened to truths, right? And capital T truths, okay, right? And multidimensional worlds and higher consciousness, right? And these tensions are rising and will continue changing, you know, these dynamics will continue changing with these tensions related to the aspects involving Venus retrograde um, and also the energy of the lunar node axis in Aries and Libra really beginning to express itself and shift the energy dynamics. You know, with this astrology, um, nostalgia and baiting can be really strong this month, especially with all the retrograde planets, right? Tests, tests of whether you get caught up in fleeting emotions or harsh criticisms or, or dramas, right? Um, and what 
one thing that's really sort of understated is, you know, this aspect where the North Node and Aries are in a conjunction in Aries and actually making a trine to Lilith and Venus retrograde in Leo. Okay. And this particular aspect is all about revealing divine truths. Okay. Because the North Node Eris, Lilith, Venus, these are all divine feminine and divine warrior uh, sort of planets, right, and, and points that are all about divine truths and sort of karmic and cosmic justice, right? And so um, divine truths are being revealed in a way that you know, where there's like undeniable facts involved and, uh, you know, situations and truths coming out that sort of make it really clear what people's intentions and even their spirits, what their intentions and spirits are just really like, you know. Um, and we're in the shadow period of Mercury retrograde in Virgo really all month. And so this helps with careful consideration um, and discerning and dissecting the truth, right? And, you know, the key to work with this aspect is to practice restraint, radical acceptance, and to dress the way you want to be addressed, okay? Um, and I'm saying that because there, this is, uh, this is energy that, again, like I said, is just ripe for baiting, it is ripe for uh, dramas, um, and um, passive aggressiveness, really, as well, right? <laughs> and uh, also jealousy, right? Also a lot of jealousy, evil eyes, and spiteful sorts of situations, right? And so again, um, the key to work with this is to practice restraint if you can, but also, you know, putting people in their place and enforcing boundaries, but also radical acceptance of the things that are being revealed to you that, um, you know, like I said, it could be shattering illusions or ideals that you may have had. And also in terms of, you know, people perhaps trying to um, bait you or take you out of your peace or stir up any sort of competitions or dramas with you, ego dramas, or evil eye and spiteful things. It's like, or even like it, prejudice, right? Passive aggressiveness in terms of like microaggressions, things like that. Um kill people with kindness, kill people with glamour. Uh, that little the Leo is about glamour magic, okay? All right. Um, look good and don't be nobody's fool, all right? That, take that with you, okay? But the particular planetary and zodiac sign signatures that are activated this month, they also really increase, like, uh, sensitivities, right? Because... They are activating um, a lot of planets and, and, and energy that really increases crown and third eye chakra activation. And where, you know, with Uranus aspects this month, this full moon in Aquarius, you know, full moon in Pisces, right? This is prominent, electric, psychic, and telepathic energies, right? And atmospheres, right? And so you may also find that, you know, you're experiencing so much synchronicity, right? Synchronistic events and information finding you. Um, again, heightened sensitivities to your environment, um, disillusionment, boredom, and even restlessness with the superficial ways of life. And again, all of this is because with this North Node in Aries, Aries is connected with enlightenment, the pineal gland, right? And just in general, the gods are just really trying to wake everybody up right now. Okay, so on that note, um, going back to the aspects, the Mercury and Mars and Virgo aspects make this a really great month for 
mindfulness and life and health management. Okay, these two um, placements in particular kind of really help with zooming out, right? And kind of um, breaking up some of that emotional energy, maybe that reactiveness, right? It helps with uh, just tapping into your rational mind a little bit, helps with business affairs, focus, you know, administrative tasks and work which needs revision and attention to detail. It helps with organization, it helps with order and systems, and again, with discernment and decision making. So all of those things that I mentioned are really what is going to be um, sort of affecting the energies from the beginning of the month through to the middle of the month, where we have the new moon in Leo happening on August 16th. and. In terms of the astrology for this new moon in Leo, um, the main sort of aspects involved are that, you know, the moon, the sun, and Venus retrograde are all going to be conjunct each other. And then they're going to be forming a square to Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus. And then uh, we're also going to have Mars and Venus in Virgo, making a trine to Uranus and Taurus as well. And so this new moon in Leo, this time at the middle of the month, um, could really be a time where incredible, creative, and exciting insights and even results related to health changes and the work that you do for a living begin to like start happening for you. You could be feeling positive, powerful effects of things like clean eating, fasting, and exercising. Um, You may get increased business um, and recognition if you are an artist, a teacher, or a mystic. Um, Something could happen or be revealed to you that is just divinely aligned to really help you troubleshoot, revise, and improve something, okay? This degree that is uh, activated with this new moon is all about rising to any challenges, you know, with optimism, you know, and with confidence in your skills and an openness to just grow and improve. And so the key with um, this time between August 16 throughout the remainder of the month, the key is to try your best to kind of hold on to the excitement, okay, and the potential and the possibility and your high self-belief, okay, because as we move along towards the end of the month, the energy does get a little bit more uh sort of emotional. I'm not going to say that it's completely depressing or anything, but just a bit more emotional where um, you may have to, again, make extra effort to um, hold on to the optimism, the high self-belief, and the sort of drive, you know, to attain certain things, to do the work that it takes to make certain things a reality as, you know, the time comes for you to start actually digging into the practical details of everything that may be required for you going forward, okay? Um, The other thing I want to note is that this new moon in Leo, this could be astrology that actually reveals some sort of surprising legal or political developments Um, that continue to undermine women's rights or women's health in some way. We could see something happen with religion uh, or foreign currency um, or just in general with like international politics. Like something could really, uh, really spark and, and, and pop off during this time with this new moon in Leo between the 16th and 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 the rest of the month really um and august 20th through the 30th and then you know this lead up to the full moon in pisces again just includes aspects that continue to influence retrospection and this sort of integration process of all that you have learned and experienced this month related to the self versus the collective 
And the self in relationship to the world, your identity, your personal philosophies on the world, your spirituality and your relationships, and your commitments, right? And you may need to rest, recalibrate, rebudget, and begin mapping out to-do lists of steps that are needed to revise, reorganize, and improve certain things and make certain goals a reality. This is a time, this lead up to this full moon in Pisces, where you may have emotional reunions or even emotional experiences from spiritual self-care or healing treatments. You may experience emotional reactions to injustice or kindness and just be contending with the harsh reality of what it means to be a divine rebel or a truth teller and an independent thinker in the world. But in any case, you're encouraged to stand firm and to choose yourself and to choose truth to evolve. Take good care of your hearts and stay tuned for your personal monthly horoscopes and tarot insights.